I am Dr Melissa Johansson from Geoid Energy Limited and these spectacular rocks which characterise the coastline of the Vale of Glamorgan in South Wales have attracted many over the decades, not only to enjoy the surf but also the beautiful scenery. Today I'd like to bring you some insights to the geological implications of the outcrops, their depositional significance and their reservoir characteristics, highlighting the types of sediments deposited in the Jurassic Carbonate, Marginal Marine and Pyrrhic Sea. The location of our investigation today is the beach at Lantwick Major, on the South Wales coast known as the Vale of Glamorgan, southwest of Cardiff, the capital of Wales in the United Kingdom. These rocks are of early Jurassic age, deposited between 174 to 201 million years ago. The marine sediments, sometimes referred to as the white, blue and grey Liassic, are shown here on the map in a blue, green, teal colour. A map of Wales during the Jurassic indicates the Welsh Massive's structural highs, with the area of Lantwick Major being covered by a shallow sea. This sea is known as an empiric sea, and it covers areas during high sea level stand. The Jurassic was a period during which oceanic anoxia occurred, and this is where there's low oxygen content. This occurred repeatedly, affecting the production and preservation of organic matter in the marine sediments. Therefore, the early Jurassic boasts important hydrocarbon source rocks worldwide and in the northwest in Europe, the North Sea and the Wessex Basin specifically. The exposed area of Wales comprised of deserts like mudflats surrounded by shallow seas which formed these limestones and when we had the anoxic event we have the marly organic material muds. About 210 million years ago the small part of the earth's crust that is now Wales lay well to the south of its present latitude where the land formed part of a huge supercontinent called Pangaea. Our climate was hot and humid with annual temperatures between 12 and 29 degrees C and during the warm climate there was no ice caps and the forest grew close to the poles with a ex large expanse of deserts within the lower latitudes of the continents. The earth prior to the Jurassic formed one supercontinent called Pangaea and 200 million years ago Pangaea began to rift into two land masses, Laurasia to the north and Gondwana to the south. The blue lias deposits represents the first normal marine sediments resulting from the transgression of the sea over the deserts and lagoons of parts of the great supercontinent Pangaea. The blue lias was deposited in what is known as the Hittangian stage of the early Jurassic epoch. The earliest Jurassic, Hittangian to early Cinemurian, was a phase of remarkable warm and dynamic climate conditions, followed by a major episode of large-scale volcanisms associated with the Triassic-Jurassic boundary. This map shows details of the Jurassic structural highs, the Scottish and Irish and Welsh massives, and the location of the coastal margin deposits in yellow and the shelf carbonates in pale blue. A predominantly anoxic water mass was persistent during the Hittangian and Cinemurian and this led to specific anoxic events and anoxic photosynthesizers to be primary source of hydrogen-rich organic matter. Characteristics of these rocks are layer upon layers of laterally extensive limestones and marls that appear cyclical with thinning and thickening bed thicknesses. The limestones are associated with sediments deposited along the marginal area of several carboniferous limestone islands. The marls with sediments deposit in deeper waters away from the presumed Liassic land. 200 million years ago, early in the Jurassic period of geological time, the sea covered southernmost Wales. On the sea floor, a blanket of fine lime sand and muds were deposited, which have since been compacted into the horizontally bedded mudstones and limestones, forming the familiar cliffs in the Lavernock and Lantwick Major area, and extending westward from Barry to Southern Down. The evolution of life was abundant in the Jurassic with many dinosaurs and reptiles roaming the land and sea. The outcrop of the Lias extends in a continuous band from the south coast of Dorset to Yorkshire with some outlying areas in Somerset and South Wales, for example Lantwick Major where we're here today. As mentioned, the Lias is associated with sediments deposited along those marginal seas with several carboniferous islands and is characterised by those interbedded limestones and marls. The Lias group rests conformably on the Penarth group and in the Vale of Glamorgan lies mainly within the Hetangian and Lower Cinemurian stages. It comprises of up to 150 metres of thin interbedded limestones and calcareous mudstones, a fascist that has been widely recognised in southern Britain and is now termed the Blue Lias Formation. The sedimentation was influenced by the presence of small islands of lower carboniferous limestone and a marginal fascist developed in their vicinity. The sequence has been subdivided into three members on the basis of the ratio of limestone to mudstone. The lowermost St Mary's Well Bay member, exposed between St Mary's Well Bay and Lavernock Point, comprises about 20 metres of mudstone with interbedded limestone in approximately equal proportions. The conformable base of the Planorbis zone and therefore the Jurassic lies some 5 to 7 metres above the base. 
The paper shells consist of delicately interlaminated pale grey calcareous siltstones and silty mudstones with abundant bivalves, echidome debris, and shallow waters attached suspension feeders dominate the bivalve macrofauna in the overlying strata bull cliff member, which consists of thin tabular limestone beds and subordinated mudstones. The Marley limestones are grey, becoming yellow when weathered, as we see here in Lantwick Major Beach. The limestones are biomicritic with tendency to become more marly at the interface with the overlying and underlying clays. The presence of burrows and accumulations of shell debris along the surfaces of bedding planes indicates extensive reworking of the sediments by marine organisms. The biotubation has resulted in the partial destruction of any original parallel laminations. The limestones are very fossiliferous and contain a rich fauna of silicified gastropods, bivalves and ammonites. Further down south on the Monmouth beach in Lyme Regis, Dorset, we see similar cycles with much more organic material and thinner limestone beds, depositing a slightly deeper water away from the Lyasse land masses. Using the gamma ray response for the rocks, the Lavenot rocks can be correlated to the outcrops on the Dorset coast. The lower layer succession exposed in many parts of southwest Britain can be divided into 18 gamma ray units, based upon total gamma ray and elemental log signature. The Jurassic rocks are notorious for abundant fossils, especially bivalves, ammonites and larger sea-dwelling creatures, and these specimens can be found along the shorelines. The early Jurassic seas teemed with life, particularly ammonites, belemonites and marine reptiles, and usually the rocks in which the fossils remains of these creatures occur are dark mudstones or thin limestones. In the Mendips, beds of rubbly limestone occur, formed by the currents sweeping along the shorelines of the Mendip Islands, and contain fossil remains of coarse ribbed bivalves that were adapted to life in turbulent waters. On Lantwick Major Beach, the waters were more quiescent, more conducive to abundant coral reef sea life. The Jurassic reefs were composed of mud mounds, sponge biostromes, trombolite reefs and coral reefs, sometimes reworked through storm events. Common fossils observed at Lantwick Major are gryphia, devil's toenail, bivalves and clams. Beautiful ammonite specimens are common, often preserved by calcite crystals. As the continents drifted northwards, the crusts broke up and at various times the seas rose and spread across the land. With these spreading seas came new marine animals that we now see fossilised in the rock record. Some of the most beautiful and spectacular are the marine reptiles known as ichneosaurs, fish lizards and plesiosaurs, which were the distant cousins of the land-living reptiles. The Lower Jurassic series can be subdivided into four large-scale second-order lithological cycles, with durations of approximately 3 to 10 million years, that appear to be synchronously developed in all onshore UK basins. Lithological cyclicity at the scale of ammonite zones and subzones, so-called third-order cycles, is recognised in a variety of fasces. Durations are inferred to be approximately 0.5 to 3 million years, in a manner that contrasts with the large-scale cycles. The medium-scale cycles become more weakly expressed upwards through the Lower Jurassic successions. Here we see the global sea level curve for the Phanerozoic. A dramatic rise occurs in the Cambrian, consistent with the opening up of the Iaptus Ocean. Global sea level drop at the end of the Cambrian is attributed to the onset of subduction with the Iaptus Ocean. The change in sea level at about 440 million years is coincident with the onset of the subduction of the Rhyak Sea. The rise in sea level in the Jurassic and the Cretaceous coincides with the opening of the Atlantic Ocean. There were no known glaciers during the Jurassic, so no second order cycles are observed in the rocks. Sea level within the long term trend was cyclical with 64 fluctuations through the Jurassic, 15 of which were over 75 metres. The most noted cyclicity in the Jurassic rock is fourth order, with a periodicity of approximately 410,000 years. The fourth order cycles are forced by astronomical changes. Eccentricity is a characteristic of the Earth's orbit around the Sun, which currently occurs every 100,000 years. Obliquity is the angle between the Earth's spin axis and the normal to ecliptic, which occurs every 41,000 years. And precision is the periodic perturbation to the spin axis, which changes every 26,000 years. At 200 million years ago, or around the time of the Jurassic, Jurassic boundary interval, the periods of dominant components have been estimated at 36.6 thousand for obliquity, 21.5 for obliquity, and 18,000 for precision. Although the vertical fasces changes are controlled by major climatic events, fasces can involve naturally both onshore and offshore. Early models of the Jurassic empiric sea circulation emphasise high bottom friction and focused on clear water environments. Redox sensitive elemental analysis indicates predominantly anoxic bottom water conditions. 
Terrestrial Palaeonorphs microfossils associations reveal warm climate conditions in conjunction with strong monsoonal runoff patterns in the Empiric Sea, a modern day environment similar to the Jurassic Sea is offshore Java. The Java Sea, one of the few modern tropical empiric seas, can be used as an analogue to examine oceanography, stratigraphy and the reefs of the Jurassic. The Java Sea is a broad, shallow continental sea characterised by quasi-estuarine circulation, in which runoff and rainfall exceed evaporation. Nutrients and organic matter influx from the land and from estuarine upwelling, which contribute to the organic-rich fasces during transgressions and sea level highs. Pinnacles and patch reefs are common in the Java Sea, although these are not seen in the outcrops at Lantwick Major. A quasi-estuarine circulation and anti-estuarine model could explain the fasces changes from limestone to marl. A quasi-estuarine model, such as the circulation in the modern Java Sea, is when runoff and precipitation greatly exceed evaporation and estuarine outflow draws some marine nutrients to the basin. Both offshore pinnacle reefs and nearshore patch reefs occur. Non-reef sediments are dominantly silicoclastic sands and muds of the Java Sea. The primary sediments of the Java Sea are framestones and skeletal grainstones, which form under oligotrophic conditions, i.e. clear water. As the waters become more turgid, bathelstones and floatstones develop. The faunal shift accompanying the eutrophication leads to carbonate fasces pouring corals and in modern oceans, numerically dominant by bryozoans, crinoids, mollusks, brachiopods and red algae. Two major fasces are observed at the Jurassic coastline of Lantwick Major. One of these is the mudstones, and these limestones are comprised almost exclusively of microspiritic calcite, bioclass, bed load structures, and dissipated suspended load laminations are absent. Whereas the waxstones, which are also composed mostly of microspiritic calcite, are identical in nature to the mudstones, however, a subordinate proportion, 1 to 20%, of the carbonates are a form of fragmentary, loosely packed macrofaunal bioclass. Tractional structures are occasionally observed. Common to the Jurassic sediments is biotobation, an associated ignofabric seen in the rocks of Planolites, Thalassinoides, Zuvigus, and Chondrites. We have now discussed the types of fasces deposited in the marginal sea of the Jurassic, and I will now elaborate on the reservoir potential of these sediments. As discussed, the early Jurassic was a period during which oceanic anoxia occurred repeatedly, affecting the production and the preservation of organic matter in marine sediments, forming homogeneous marine type II source rocks deposited in these rocks. Therefore, the early Jurassic boasts important hydrocarbon source rocks worldwide, and in the northwestern Europe, the Wessex Basin and the North Sea specifically. The Lyish group in the UK can be correlated across Europe by a distinct phase of black shale deposition, which occurred during the Torsian stage of the early Jurassic. Associated organic rich shales are prominent throughout northwest Europe, for example, the Poseidian shales of Netherlands and the jet rocks of Whitby mudstone formation of Yorkshire. This phase of black shale deposition is now commonly known as the Torsian Oceanic Anoxic Event. In Wales, the Lower Jurassic can be correlated from the Mocras borehole in the northeast to the off the coast of Pembroke. The offshore distribution of the Lower Jurassic strata is controlled by the Bristol Channel and the South Celtic Sea basins in the south, and by the St George Channel and the Cardigan Bay basins further to the north. To the west, the South Celtic Sea Basin, the Blue Lyre sequence, thickens to 604 metres and the proportion of limestone increases markedly. At the edge of the Cardigan Bay, the Mocras borehole proved the thickest Lower Jurassic sequence to be 1,305 metres in the British Isles, and all four stages are present. The sequence is dominated by massive calcareous mudstone and siltstone, which are extensively biotubated. This well log panel showing logs from the Melvin Basin in France in the west through the Celtic Sea and the Bristol Channel to the Wessex Basin in the east. The wells display the gamma ray in red, the sonic log in blue and the density log in black. The coloured shading indicates the inferred ages and the characteristic interbedded limestone and marl is reflected in the serrated stacked gamma ray response, which can be correlated across the formation exhibiting increasing shale towards the east as the waters deepen offshore. This well was drilled in 1986 in the South Celtic Sea Basin, an east-northeast trending syncline structure. Locally, there is a fairly thick Lower Jurassic sequence, and in well 93-02-2, the sequence is inferred to be around 690 metres thick, recovered between 780 to 1,470 metres in depth. According to the initial age model for the wells, as derived from the well completion report, they are lowermost Jurassic Hittansian deposits, overlying the characteristic uppermost Jurassic carbonate beds, the White Lias. Successively, a sequence of shales and carbonates were deposited, supposedly all of Cinemurian age. A remarkable increase in the gamma ray log intensity is seen, 
signifying a series of more organic rich shales which are recorded between 1,040 to 1,100 metres in depth. Although the main fascias is micritic limestone, fracturing can enhance the reservoir potential, especially as the limestones are associated with its own source rock. In limestone and marl alterations, the bedding provides a mechanical anisotropy that controls fracture distribution. Anisotropy is a physical property which has different values when measured in different directions. Fracture studies investigating layered or bedded rock successions typically show horizontal bedding as within their model. However, the thin, well-bedded limestones show high fracture densities, more than the semi-nodular limestones of the same bed thickness. Characteristic of this region is that east-west-north-south fracture networks, which provide a good connectivity for a potential reservoir. Although this is a cave carved by the sea in the subsurface, caves can form by calcification and the dissolution of calcium carbonate. Although they pose drilling hazards, they also provide vast storage potential within a carbonate reservoir. To conclude, the blue lice in Glamorgan is characterised by rhythmic interbedded centimetre to metre scale, laterally extensive marls and limestone beds. The fascias comprise of alternations of massive, indurated, large, micritic limestones and variable calcareous claystones. Omission surfaces or paleo sea floors are recognised by the development of vertically restricted but laterally extensive horizons, characterised by abundant indigenous benthic microfossils in or close to life position, as well as extensive ichnofabrics. Semi-nodular limestones, that is beds with bedding plane irregularities, exhibit significantly lower fracture densities, despite their low bed thickness. And east-west and north-south orientated fractures form a vast network of interconnected fractures across the platforms.